today I'm going to show you how to light an athlete um, like an NFL, NBA, MLB player, uh, like the way I light Nike athletes. So your average team photo, we're going to take it to the next level with the lighting. So I'm going to show you what strobes, the setup, um, all the equipment needed. Uh, we're going to use an inexpensive strobe, uh, not like the pro photo stuff I typically shoot with. Um, I'll give you a full rundown of all the links and everything in the comments, where to find it on Amazon, Adorama, wherever you can find it, uh, what type of camera. Well, you, you can use any camera you want, really. Um, I prefer a full frame camera if you can get one, um, but, you know, whatever you've got, you can make it work. Well, let's take a look into the studio and I'll show you how uh, we'll set everything up. Let's do it. All right, everything's uh, pretty much set up out there, uh, dialed in. It's a good thing, uh, I've done it a million times, so I kind of know where everything goes. But I do use a tape measure and I do make a, a ledger, a map of what I've done before, so I can easily get back to, to duplicate what I've done before, uh, just by making some small measurements of where stands were and heights and power settings on the strobes and things like that to make setup a lot quick and easier. So now I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. All right, let's take a look at the setup. So uh, first off, let's talk about the camera flags right here. Uh, they're used to block the light from our edge lights, which are in the back, which you can see back there blocks those from adding any kind of flare into the lens. So we use that. You could use, these are camera flags that I've got. You can use cardboard. You can use anything you want, really. Uh, just as long as it's black, it's usually good black so it's not reflective and it won't bounce light back on to your subject when they're in the set. So we've got those. So these are in place for that. And then above me, we've got our main light which has a 30 degree grid on it, right here. And that focuses the light onto our subject. And it just slides right in, clamps right into that. And then it just, foc I focus it on the subject. You adjust it once your talent's here, make little adjustments to focus it where you want it on that person. And then our two, like I showed just a minute ago, back in the back, be the two edge lights, which will edge light, obviously, because I call it edge light. Uh, edge light are counting once they're in there. And then I've got a little uh, steamer over here, which I will show the trick of that. We're going to add a little smoke, but we're going to use steam because that way it dissipates in the studio right away, goes away really quick so you don't get a haze in the studio, fog in here, and then have to wait for it to clear. This way it goes away quickly and I can keep shooting and it's, it looks different every time. It's just kind of a fun trick. So we're gonna show how to do that and then we will add a background light to this background, which we don't use when we're using the uh, steam or the smoke, because if you light the background and the white smoke, when you light it, it just goes away on the, if the background isn't dark, so you need a black background uh, to do that. And then you need your background, it should be up at least 10 feet, De depends on your your uh, talent, how tall they are. But if you've got a you know, high school kid or somebody else, you may need to go taller than 10 feet. Because when I shoot this thing, we're gonna shoot a little lower angle uh, to make that our talent look a little more heroic. So your standard shots, pretty much you can see these, you know, most people that shoot these things, they shoot them straight on and then just the kid looks, doesn't look very heroic, they look small. We want them to look big, like, you know, an NFL player, NBA, whatever, we want to make them look like a pro athlete. So that's why we shoot from a little lower angle, give them a little more, make them look a little taller, a little more stronger, a little, you know, beefier. Okay, yeah, the black background, you can use, you know, this is just a seamless uh, background. You can use cloth if you want. Uh, try and get it, you know, somewhat like 10 feet away 
from your subject. That way, when you're lighting, no splash will come on it, the light and anything bouncing around. We want to keep that as dark as possible. And that, uh, that 10 feet from where your uh, talent is is usually a good distance. To make sure that stays nice and black. And uh, now I'll just uh, grab a spare strobe head and kind of go over what they look like. All right, here's our strobe unit. It's the Studio Pro uh, F064200. I don't know where they came up with that name, but it's around 200 watt seconds, I would say, power-wise. Pretty simple. Uh, it's got the Bowens uh, mount, so you can buy a lot of accessories for it that just go right in, and they're really affordable. Uh, and I've got a 30 degree grid on most of the lights out there, uh, is what we're using on this shoot. And they just slide right in like that. Easy on in the back, powers right up. A uh, tenth of a stop controls right here, which is very nice. Full power is six, but it's like 200 watt seconds. And then you've got your controls. You can control each head. You can give each head a number so when you're using the little remote here that they offer, which is a great value, it's $49, I believe, or $29. I will put all the equipment and stuff, links for where you can find it on Amazon or wherever, Adorama. Um, but you can control what number you want this to be so I can control this head versus the other heads and you can just control it through here. And then it just fires right there, goes right on your hot shoe. Um, which is great. We'll have it on the camera when we get our talent here. Um, you can put it on the little eye, which is the little slave guy right there. So if one of the other strobes fires, it can fire it as well. And then you've got your sound, which triggers when you test it. I've got the other strobe still on, but you turn that guy on, makes a nice beep sound knowing that they're fully charged and ready to shoot again because you don't want to shoot until this thing is fully charged so you're getting the full amount of power out each time model light is on here you can do it proportional or you can turn it, turn it up to get a little green light right there which tells you it's on full power all right so that's a t that's a quick look at the strobes power that off get this out of the way so all the stands i mean i'm using c stands out there for a bunch of things you can use just regular stands you don't need to use the c stands uh, got the other upper head here on a mini boom. Uh, you can find booms, you know, whatever you need to get this suspended out over your subject without having to be in the way. So a, a little mini boom. They're, they're not that expensive, uh, like 80, 90 bucks for a boom. Uh, but if you're going to use a mini boom like this, a C stand is really a good stand to use because they're super strong and sandbag it, that kind of thing, to make sure it doesn't fall on anybody. Okay, I think that's uh, a quick look at, oh, and then the Apple box out here, I have the uh, talent stand on that, so when I sit, I'm gonna sit on another Apple box to shoot from, and that gets them up in the air a little bit more, get a little lower angle, make them still heroic, that kind of thing. That's about it for now. We're gonna do a couple quick tests, make sure everything's firing right, hook up the computer, get the camera hooked up uh, before, uh, before the talent shows up, which will be shortly. Okay, we got our talent, Max, here, and we're gonna start uh, turning things on. I turned some lights on already, but we'll come back here, and uh, we've got our steamer set up that'll create the smoke in the background, which we'll just turn on. I've got it sit on the ground, with um, a, uh, if you can see, come over this way a little bit. You can see I've got it into a little drain, a 90 degree angle thing, we'll fire up the steamer. And uh, then that's gonna start generating steam, which will give us um, the smoke behind him. And it'll dissipate in the room because it's steam, so it goes up and goes away really quick, so we don't have to worry about it uh, filling the whole studio with smoke or anything like that. We've got our edge lights on already, which we can see on him, which look good. And our main, our main light right here on him as well, which is set up and dial in. You wanna make sure that you get this pointed directly at him so he can see that you can see it's right at his face. And then the edge lights are coming right to the sides of, his, of him as well. So you get the edge lights working on the sides. 
And then we've got over here, we've got the Canon uh, 1DX Mark II, which you can use any camera you want. But I've got a, an inexpensive 85 millimeter Canon lens on here um, just to keep things cheaper along with the, the lights as well. And then we're set up shooting two Capture One. Camera's tethered to this. So I've already done a couple test shots just to see and make sure things are lit right already. And then you can see that some of the steam. And then if we look back out onto set real quick, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not with the video, but the steam is already coming up behind him, which will look good. Uh, normally, I would, uh, normally I would turn the lights off in this situation, but for the video, we'll just keep it on. Uh, it's a little easier to see when the lights are off because then I can really see where the lights are and everything. So now I'm gonna sit down, uh, frame him up. He's got looking good right there. And I'll just, you kind of just wait for the smoke to be in the right position, the steam, frame him up, fire off one. So that's looking good. And we'll take a quick look over here, make sure our exposure looks good. Everything looks nice. It's good. It's looking really tough, so that's good. Shoot a couple more here. You'll have to excuse the videographer. This is her first time. Oh. <laughs> All right, so give me a little bit more intensity in your eyes. Just kind of squint your eyes a little bit. Yeah, like that. That's good, right there. Chain up just a touch. Yeah. Good. We've got a few good great shots of him already on the screen. I've looked at those. They look good. The one thing you want to make sure that uh, your uh, f-stop is not up too high. So you want to be around 5.6, f8, somewhere in there. If you get too much depth of field, then you'll start to pick up texture in the background or make the smoke too in focus. And you want to make it a little bit more limited depth of field. But, you know, f5.6, f f8, that's good just so you make sure you keep them in focus. And now we're going to make a quick little change to the background in case you don't have a commercial steamer like I have uh, for the smoke. We'll just do a spotlight on the background and we'll do a quick change for that. I'll show you how we set that up and we'll uh, do a couple more and then we're done. Okay, now we're going to add an additional light to the background, get rid of the uh, steamer uh, to uh, do a little bit different in case you don't have a steamer. We're going to do a little spotlight on the back. And on the background, every, all the other lights have a 30 degree grid on them. This we use a 20 degree to make a little smaller light on the back. And then we use a, a little bogan floor stand. Put this guy on. And then you'll adjust the background power and angle and tilt once you get the model back in there to get it to where it's a desired look for you. That should be good as a good starting point right there. Okay. All right, we got our model back in there, our background light in there. We don't have to worry about it seeing it because we're cropping above it, and that's why we're having him stand on the apple box as well to give him that little more heroic height for me. And then we'll just do a quick test here. And I can see on the screen it's not bright enough, so I'm gonna make a quick adjustment to uh, brighten that up. There we go, showing up good now. Now a little tougher. There it is. Good. All right. We got it. Good job. Okay, now we'll look at what we've got on, on the computer and make our select. All right, so we're making some selects. I've already gone through and looked at these, uh, found what I like. Uh, the steam looks really good here. So now we're going to go in and make him look grittier with some uh, change in the contrast over here. Going to jack that up uh, pretty good. And this, again, this is can all be to your liking. You can mess around, get what you do what you like. And up the saturation just a little bit. And then once you take the contrast up that high, you gotta bring the exposure down uh, just a little bit here. And then I'm gonna bring up the shadows just a touch, like that, somewhere in there. 
Uh, levels, I'm going to bring the black in just a touch as well. Uh, and then down here in structure, I'm going to take this way up and give it a little bit of a gritty. That'll help give the gritty feel to it. Somewhere in there looks good like that. Um, yeah, it's looking good. Maybe take the exposure down just a bit more right in there. That's looking pretty good. Black's looking pretty good. Yeah, that pops that steam in the back a little bit more. I like that. I brought the curve in just a touch as well. Yeah, so that pretty much has it right there. So then I'll just uh, process this out to the desktop. And then we'll double check that it looks good in Photoshop. Now we got it open in Photoshop. Everything looks good. Saturation to me looks a little high, so I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. Saturation just a touch. Yeah, just a touch in there. That looks good. And then I'm going to blur out the bottom of his legs just a little bit too, because that looks a little too... with a little tilt shift filter. Bring that on there. Get rid of that. I don't want to turn it. I'll just take it up. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll just bring up the blur just a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Looks good. We're good with that how that comes out. Yeah, that's nice. Just a little bit of blur down there. Makes it all about him. Gives it a bit grittiness. And uh, that should do it. Okay, that wraps it up. Uh, hope you liked the lighting tutorial on that. How to take your athlete portrait, team photo, whatever, to the next level. Have fun with it in Photoshop. Add grain contrast, you know, whatever you want to do. Just kind of a nice basic start. I will show the other photo with the background light without the steam in case, you know, you want to see that image. Again, I, in the comments, I list all the gear I used and that's about it. Hope you like the video. Uh, subscribe if you like and uh, I'm out.